copycatters! Today we're doing the final product review video for the Dyson V8 Animal, which was sent to us by a company that wanted me to do a comparison video with their Tineco A10 Hero. So we've already done that video and I'll include a link to that below. And then I will show you the benefits uh, of the Dyson V8 Animal in this video. So let's get started! So here I am vacuuming my floor on Sunday night when it's trash night, taking out the trash, and I move all the litter boxes and everything out of the way, and it shows you the maneuverability of the Dyson. It has that kind of roller ball thing that Dyson became famous for. Uh, it's not a true roller bar, but it does maneuver really easily just with the twist of your wrist. And it also gets under things like your bed or it does a fair job on carpet too that's what i wanted to show here by carpeting by vacuuming on carpet it's super lightweight too so it's easy to get under everything and a good narrow space as well here we are on my kitchen floor, and one of the things about the Dyson, and you'll see it later on in this video too, is that there's lots of air that's blown out of the Dyson, so that hair that was flinging around is from the air blowing out from the Dyson. And that's probably one of the things I didn't really care for about it, because uh, it would like blow receipts off of my counter and stuff, or pieces of paper off my counter when I was vacuuming. But it wouldn't be a reason not to buy it, in my opinion. It was just something I found a little bit annoying, and I had to be more cognizant of what I removed. But as you can tell here, it does a good job of cleaning up cat litter scatter here, cat hair on my carpet downstairs, and it easily goes underneath that horizontal scratching beam we have. And then more cat hair upstairs. This cat hair is all over the place. Cat hair in the living room again, behind the cat scratcher we have there. I pulled that out and vacuumed there. This is from our cat cardboard cat scratcher that is really falling apart. So it always has these cardboard bits all over the place. So it's nice to have something to easily pick that up. and behind my chair where I had to crawl out my window to get snow off my roof. Then downstairs by the litter boxes, more litter scatter. Now this shows you how easily it gets under. And if you watched our Tineco video, you would have seen that the Tineco lifts up when it goes under, but the Dyson stays on the ground as you can see. There's no lifting. So that's really nice that it stays down so that the section obviously is truer when it gets further behind the object. And same here underneath the shelves in my basement. There was like a little cap or something there. The battery on the Dyson V8 Animal is not removable. So you have to charge the whole main body together. And it does come with a hanging rack if you want to use that. You can easily hang the Dyson on the wall, as you can see at my sister's house. She has it hanging on the wall. Uh, a friend of mine in Australia um, hangs hers in a closet. So if you have a plug in a closet, you can always do that as well. This is what happens when it's charging. You can see that there are three different lights and it's on the lowest level, which means that it still has quite a bit of charging to do. And I think it's about four hours, but I'll include a link to where you can buy it online that will have all the specifications uh, to show you, you know, how long it needs to charge for and how long it lasts for and all that good stuff. I have consistently used the Dyson in a max suction mode. I tried the high suction extended run, but I just don't see the point if I can have a higher suction level, then that's what I wanna use it with. So I used it this entire review on pretty much that max section. The thing I was pretty impressed with and have been pretty impressed with with the Dyson is the minimal hair wrap on this main power tool. 
and I don't know if that's uh, what they call it, but that's all the hair that has been collected in the entire time that we've had this, which has been about six weeks now or more. And I like anything that I don't have to clean off like that. To empty the Dyson V8 animal, there is a little trash can icon here that shows you that you just lift up. I haven't really um, become an expert of the, at this yet. Lift it up, and then obviously, as you can see, it pops off. And then you close that back up. I might tap that a little bit. And then you just close the bottom. So technically, you're not touching anything, any of the dust that's been left in, and it all goes in the trash. The Dyson V8 animal comes with four different accessories. Here is a motorized pet tool. And as you can see, and as I've said in previous vacuum review videos, I'm not a fan of motorized pet tools uh, because of the hair wrap that they cause. However, if you have a tool like a lily brush, which I'll link to in the about section below, you can first use that to remove the pet hair and then go in and use a motorized tool like this to loosen up the dirt and debris and get that out of your furniture or your pet beds or, or cat tree, whatever you have. Then they have a crevice tool, which is great. And what I like about all of the Dyson accessories is it has this clip basically that tells you that it's been secured well to the main body. And then these two I haven't used and probably won't. I think that they're upholstery brushes. I just, I don't really understand the purpose of them. And in the hanging thing that Dyson has, this is where you can like hang it on the wall. And uh, they only really offer you options to use two of the accessories to hang, but that also shows you where it clips in pretty well. So if this is hanging on the wall, you don't have to worry about it falling out. It stays in there pretty well. So here's the main body and the accessories, just like the main wand power brush, clip in the same way, and then you can hear the click, which is really nice to know that it's secure and in there. The cool thing about these cordless vacs is that they can be used as a handheld vacuum, but you can also use them with the pole and then add the accessory on the end. So if your back hurts like mine does from shoveling yesterday, shoveling snow, then you don't have to bend over to get your cleaning done. Or if you're disabled or something like that where you can't bend over uh, easily or readily, then this is a great tool to have for that. And so I'll show you how that works. And then the beautiful thing too is that you can shoot it up as well and get the corners. Remember earlier how I mentioned that the Dyson blows off a lot of hair? You can see how my hair on my head is blowing from basically, I guess, exhaust or something of the Dyson. So that's what will like blow papers off your counter and stuff, which you have to be careful about when you use the Dyson. Whenever I use a crevice tool, I always think of my mom just because I remember so well her vacuuming with the crevice tool. I like that for my stairs, I don't know if you guys have wooden stairs, but I get clumps of cat hair in the corners of my stairs, which is really annoying. Um, and then little pieces of litter can go underneath the hardwood floors between the carpet and the hardwood, which is also great for the crevice tool to grab really quick. And then it picks up hair really well as well. On this accessory, you can choose to use it with the brush extended or with the brush not extended. So you might use this to pick up like the red lentils I, I spilled in an earlier Taneco video. Whereas you might push the, the brush forward, you know, to use it for the corners of the ceiling where you don't, you might not want to leave a mark from the plastic and the soft bristles aren't going to do that, but it's going to pick up the dust for you anyway. This one, I would imagine, is the same situation. I really didn't use these too much at all.
and the motorized power brush. I'll show you how that one works. This is the top of Charlie and Trigg's cat power tower, which is a discontinued cat tree. And so I'll use the motorized pet brush on that. Please note that it already has a good amount of hair wrap on it. So now it has more hair wrap on it, but as you can see, it definitely gets into the carpet fibers and pulls out everything, which is nice. A lot of you are going to think I sound like a broken record if you're a regular subscriber and watcher of our videos, because I will say again that I do not like hair wrap, so I wouldn't use this tool. I mean, I used it like this because of this review video to show you how it works, but normally I would use a lily brush on the fur before I vacuumed it and then just use this motorized pet tool uh, to get out the loose dirt and debris so that I didn't have to pull all of this out after already vacuuming. There's two filters. One is here. And then you can see that Dyson has a website phone number. If you have questions, you can contact them there. And then there's also a filter here that just pulls out. And I'm sure replacements are available online. All right, after I did the video of the Taneko A10 Hero, a reader wrote me and asked me how long, and she said she's tall, so she wanted to know how long this was, basically from the trigger handle to the floor, and it is 41 inches, or 3 feet and 5 inches, so I have to do the conversions, because I know she's in the Netherlands, but I don't have a measuring tape that's in the metric system. If you're a subscriber to our channel, then you know that we recently reviewed the Tineco A10 Hero, and these folks actually are the ones that asked me to review the Dyson along with their unit. And the big difference between a Dyson and the Tineco is this little lever here. When you want to use it you, on, on both vacuums, you have to hold down this power button in order to get the vacuum to go. But with the Tineco, you can use this lever to keep the power button engaged without wearing out your trigger finger. And the Dyson, you have to keep your trigger finger on it in order for it to work continuously. You remove the trigger finger and it stops. Now, I think that that is just a matter of preference. At first, I really liked the lever, and I still do like the lever, but I didn't find that this was too difficult to keep engaged, and actually wondered if it kind of saved battery for when I paused. Then obviously my finger would release, and then the battery might have been saved. I'm not really sure, but I didn't end up minding it as much as I thought I would. Lastly, but certainly not leastly, I wanted to talk about the cat's fear level with the Dyson. This is my cat that's scared of vacuums, <laughs> and he does not like it when it's turned on. But to give you an idea, idea with the Shark Apex or the Auric, he would have been out of the room, not even close to the darn vacuum. So it's better than a regular upright vacuum. He didn't seem to be as fearful as the Tineco though. So I think um, the Dyson just sounds higher pitched for him or, you know, higher sound level than the Tineco. All right, guys, that wraps up our product review video for the Dyson V8 Animal. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask, especially if there's something I didn't cover or something like that. And I'll include a link in the about section below to where you can buy it online if you'd like. And please let me know too if you have a cordless stick vacuum and how you like it, what you use it for, um, is your life better with it or without it? I would be interested in knowing. Somebody wants to go, so we'll go. Thanks for watching.